Today I'm going to show you how I make my Cape Malay inspired chicken curry in a hurry. First of all, the secret behind a good curry, of course, are spices. You can go and buy a curry spice mix, that's up to you. I want to inspire you to make your own gara masala, Cape Malay style curry mix. It's all about tempering your spices. Spices are dried, they're preserved. What you need to do is you need to heat them up in a pan. You can do it on your stovetop in a dry pan, no oil, on a low flame, Put them in a pan and just let them heat up gradually and then you can put them in your pestle and mortar and you have your own instant garam masala spice mix. We will be using onions, garlic and ginger as our base flavors. We will be using red and green chilies and of course this curry is a tomato and yogurt based curry and for our vegetable mix when I think curry, I'm thinking crispy, vibrant and colourful flavours. So I've got some beautiful rainbow baby carrots, I've got some baby corn, I've got some fresh crispy radishes and I've got some beautiful yellow patty pans. With our curry, we're going to do a beautiful, fluffy, aromatic basmati rice and I'm going to show you how to make a quick pickled cucumber that serves as a cooler for your curry. But first, let's take an in-depth look of the spices that we will be using. For a classic Cape Malay inspired garam masala spice mix, we use bay leaves, curry leaves, fennel seeds, chili flakes, star anise, peppercorns, black peppercorns, and cassia bark. For our already ground and roasted spices, we're going to use paprika, turmeric, garlic salt and a little bit of cayenne pepper. Put that all in a pan, put it on a low flame on your stove, roast it, grind it and you've got your instant ready to go garam masala spice mix. Once your spice is grounded nice and fine, you'll smell that beautiful fragrant masala spice. Now we are going to marinate our chicken in the spice before we fry it off in our pot for the curry. Cut up your chicken into nice bite-sized little bites. Once your chicken is cut into cubes, add them in a mixing bowl and take two nice tablespoons of your curry powder and make sure all the chicken is covered with spice. We are going to marinate it and allow it to rest in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. And cover with cling film and allow it to rest in the fridge for at least 20 to 30 minutes. As a cooler I'm going to make a simple pickled cucumber. So take half a cucumber and slice it all the way down the middle from top to bottom. Scrape out the middle seeds with a spoon because the seeds is just going to make your pickle watery. So all you want would be the flesh on the outside right. Slice thinly. Put it in a bowl and add equal amounts of caster sugar, one nice big tablespoon of fish sauce, one nice big tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Mix well and allow to rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour.
So once your chicken is marinating and your pickled cucumber is pickling in the fridge, let's move on to cutting the vegetables. When you cut your vegetables, stay true to the form of the vegetable. Don't cut your carrots into rings. Cut it lengthways so it still looks like a carrot. Cut your radish into rings to still look like a radish. Roughly chop your chilies, cream your garlic, fine dice your onion, and slice your ginger. Now that we have all our elements ready, let's go put it together in our pot. Begin by heating a little bit of vegetable oil. When the oil is medium hot, add the marinated chicken. Sear off until golden brown on all sides. Remove it from the pot and put it aside to rest. In the same pot, fry off your onion, garlic, ginger and chili mix. Once that is nice and soft and translucent, add one tablespoon of your garam masala spice mix. Fry that for about two to three minutes. Add your chopped tomato puree. Once that have simmered for about 10 to 15 minutes, add your seared chicken and simmer for about 30 minutes. Next up, the rice. For the perfectly cooked rice, always use the following measurements. One cup of rice to two cups of water. Put your rice in a pot, Add your water cold. Always start with cold water. I'm going to add cassia bark, which is essentially is cinnamon, cardamom pods and star anise to my rice for the aromatics. Cover with a lid, bring to a boil and then lower the heat to a simmer for about 8 to 10 minutes. Never take off the lid. Once the rice is steamed and cooked, take off the lid, stir, and you'll have perfectly fluffy rice. Once your curry has finished cooking, remove from the heat and gently fold in the yogurt. Let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes and your curry is ready. Now, let's dish up. Give your cucumbers a little squeeze just to get all the excess liquid out of there. And there you have my perfect Kate Malay inspired chicken curry. Simple, straightforward, no bullshit. Thank you for watching this episode of Table 43. Please like and subscribe.